the Black American tribe. They tried to hide. Have you ever heard of the largest slave revolt in American history? One that was so successful that it forced the United States government to spend more money defeating it than any conflict other than the Vietnam War? No, we are not talking about Nat Turner's rebellion or the Haitian Revolution. This was an incredible chapter in American history that has been almost completely forgotten and erased from the history books. A story of indomitable courage, fierce resistance, and an unbreakable quest for liberty against all odds. It's the true story of the Black Seminoles, a freedom-fighting tribe made up of escaped enslaved Africans and Native Americans who banded together in Spanish Florida in the 1600s and 1700s. For over 150 years, they forged their own haven of liberty in the untamed wilderness, free from the shackles of slavery and oppression that defined the young United States. Runaways find refuge. It all began with a handful of defiant souls who refused to accept the brutal system of slavery being imposed upon them. In the late 1600s, a small group of just eight men, two women, and a nursing child managed to escape from the hellish grip of the Carolina plantations. But they didn't stop there. Driven by an insatiable thirst for freedom, they undertook an incredibly perilous journey southward into the vast, uncharted wilderness of Spanish Florida rather than risking recapture up north. You see, at that time, Florida was still sovereign Spanish territory where the ancient empires had outlawed human slavery over 200 years before. So when this tiny band of rebels finally staggered, malnourished, and wounded into the streets of St. Augustine in 1687, they were welcomed into freedom by the Spanish authorities. The colonial governor sheltered these refugees as required by Christian doctrine, despite furious demands from English slave catchers to return the property. This crucial first act of humanitarian refuge gave hope to generations of enslaved Africans toiling on English plantations. Two years later, in 1693, under pressure from the free black settlements, King Charles II of Spain issued a proclamation offering freedom to any enslaved people who could successfully escape to Spanish-controlled Florida. A beacon of hope. That decree lit the flame of possibility that would draw a steady stream of freedom seekers southward over the next century like moths to a beacon in the night. It was an opportunity embraced at almost any cost by those suffering in generational bondage. Over 100 harrowing years, Hundreds more runaways followed in the footsteps of that first group, pouring into the wilderness of Florida to flee the daily cruelties, beatings, rapes, and dehumanization they endured under slavery's lash. Many didn't survive the deadly journey through harsh landscapes, hostile native territories, hunger, exposure, and the constant threat of being pursued and captured by slavers' militia. But those who made it to Spanish Florida by boat on foot, or by following secret routes and codes of the Underground Railroad, created the very first havens of black freedom in what would become the United States. Frontier Maroon communities sprang up like Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose in 1738, the first legal free black settlement in what is now the United States. At the same time, Native American Creeks from what is now Georgia and Alabama were also migrating southwards into Spanish Florida. Some were fleeing the oppression and violence of European colonists encroaching on their lands, while others wanted to separate from Creek factions that had begun adopting Western ways, like slavery and patriarchy against their traditional values. These Seminole Creeks established their own villages in the territory as well. Drawn together by shared suffering, racial oppression, and a driving desire for liberty at all costs, the black refugees and native Seminoles began forming ties and blending their societies in their new Florida home. They welcomed new runaway arrivals into their communities, created tribal towns, blended elements of their cultures, and united to defend their hard-won freedom from English slavers and settlers at every turn. In time, many Africans and natives came to consider themselves one people, the Seminoles of Spanish Florida, 
with mixed black and indigenous heritage. First, Seminole War. For decades, this tenacious refusal to submit and the flourishing of multiracial freedom in the wilderness of Florida stuck like a thorn in the side of the young United States government and the wealthy Southern slave-owning class it served. So when Andrew Jackson was elected as the seventh president in 1828, he decided to burn out that thorn with fire and bloodshed. Jackson was a wealthy Tennessee slaveholder and Indian hater who had built his career and fortune through brutal domination and violence. On the campaign trail, he had vowed to remove all Native Americans from the lands the U.S. wanted for itself and its white settlers no matter what it took. He also promised to eliminate any route or haven for enslaved people to escape bondage and challenge the Slavocracy's racial caste system. So in 1816, when Jackson was named the military governor of Florida, he wasted no time launching a campaign of horrific violence and terror to subjugate the Seminoles that became known as the First Seminole War of 1816-1819. Haunted by runaway slave warriors with insolent pretensions of personal freedom, his commanders unleashed a scorched earth campaign of indiscriminate killing, village burning, and driving refugees into the swamps. But the fierce Seminole fighters answered with defiance and resistance like Jackson's forces had never encountered. Seasoned guerrilla battalions like over 800 Negro Fort Blacks joined by native Seminole Red Stick warriors mounted a sturdy defense of their communities. Led by legendary black Seminole figures like Chief John Horse, they fought with courage and tenacity to hold their ground against the American invasion for months, despite being vastly outnumbered. Jackson's troops eventually destroyed the ancient fortress of Negro Fort and burned village after village to the ground. But the black Seminole warriors continued waging guerrilla resistance from deep within the Florida wetlands before being forced to retreat and disperse, vowing to never surrender their homeland or submit to enslavement under American rule. In 1819, after losing over 1,500 soldiers and ruinous expenses, Spain was essentially forced to cede Florida to the United States for $5 million to avoid further war under the adams onis Treaty. This cleared the way for the U.S. to move in and subjugate the Seminoles once and for all. But the indomitable black and native Seminoles absolutely refused to surrender, submit to enslavement, or relinquish their stake in the Florida land that had become their hard-won sanctuary and homeland. This deeply rooted defiance ignited a decades-long cycle of conflict that erupted into the largest sustained rebel resistance movement ever waged on American soil, the Negro War. Two decades after the First Seminole War, the U.S. government decided it was time to violently uproot the remaining Seminoles in Florida and force them to relocate west of the Mississippi River as part of the brutal Trail of Tears campaign against Native Americans. When the Seminole Nation refused to comply with the forced removal in the 1830s, it provided the spark that lit the flames of the intense Second Seminole War from 1835-1842. This time, hundreds of formerly enslaved Africans answered the call to join a mass uprising alongside the Black Seminole Nation against the American military forces intent on crushing them. Outraged U.S. commanders like General Thomas Jessup were taken aback by the fierce, unbreakable resistance they encountered, dubbing it a Negro War rather than a simple Indian conflict as they had expected. For seven long years of bitter fighting, the joint force of armed black Seminole warriors, Native Seminoles, Miccosukees, Creeks, and Choctaws managed to wage one of the most effective guerrilla resistance campaigns against the full might of the U.S. Army on American soil. They launched ambushes and raids and stood their ground defending their families and wilderness havens with everything they had. The brilliant black Seminole commanders John Horse and Wildcat proved to be legendary military strategists who constantly outwitted and outmaneuvered their American pursuers through superior guerrilla warfare and resistance tactics. 
They negotiated an initial ceasefire with the U.S. in 1837, only agreeing to removal from Florida in exchange for ironclad assurances that the American government would grant official emancipation papers to their African warriors, recognizing their birthright of freedom. Pushed to the brink of financial ruin, the United States grudgingly agreed to the Black Seminoles' non-negotiable terms to finally cease the costly and humiliating conflict. But as the war-weary Black Seminole refugees arrived in Oklahoma, reserves on the Trail of Tears death march, they were quickly betrayed yet again. The Final March to Mexico in 1842, the U.S. Attorney General declared the government had no authority to emancipate the black Seminoles after all. Their hard-won freedom was snatched away, and they were threatened with being enslaved by local native slaveholders in their Oklahoma reservation. So, in 1849, many of the black Seminoles decided to leave America behind forever. Led by their chiefs John Horse and Wildcat, they launched an incredible 1,400-mile march to find true freedom across the border in Mexico, where slavery was abolished decades earlier. After incredible hardship and loss of life, the Black Seminole refugee caravan finally arrived in Mexico in 1850, settling in northern border towns like Nacimiento. The Mexican government welcomed them with open arms, granting them land, rights, and autonomy in exchange for helping defend the country's frontier from Apache raiders and Anglo-American intruders. Legacy of Resistance For the next few decades, the Black Seminoles once again tasted liberty, forging communities blending Native and African traditions and passing down a proud legacy of courage and unbreakable resistance to their children. Some were even recruited by the U.S. Army to serve as feared Indian scouts and auxiliary forces during the later Indian Wars after the Civil War. But even in their Mexican refuge, the Black Seminoles were destined to be betrayed again when American settlers began encroaching into their lands and trying to re-enslave them in the 1870s. So some were uprooted yet again, settling this time in remote parts of northern Mexico like El Nacimiento Dos and El Camino del Diablo. The descendants of the Black Seminoles still proudly carry on their unique heritage and history of sacrifice for freedom even today. Over 300 years after their ancestors first defied the cruelties of American slavery, theirs is a story of resilience, resistance, and unbreakable family bonds in the face of near-constant oppression. It's a story that should be shouted from the rooftops and taught in every school across America. For the Black Seminoles are true patriots, people who embodied the revolutionary ideals of liberty and self-determination that America still struggles to achieve for all its people. Yet for too long, the light of their incredible legacy has been dimmed and hidden away in the shadows, buried under the whitewashing of history books. It's time we uncover their truth and give these unsung freedom fighters of the Black Seminole Nation the honor, recognition, and remembrance they have always deserved. So if you were impacted or inspired by rediscovering this stirring piece of American history, don't forget to like, share this video, and subscribe for more illuminating truth being brought into the light.